The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Unmuted. Good morning, everyone. This is session two of the Top Solid Design What's New features for 7.15. Uh, we're going to get going here in just a second. There's a few more people logging in that I see. Um, I was instructed to wish everyone the following. May the fourth be with you. This way, this is part of this recording forever. You're welcome for the corny joke. Okay, so let's get started. This is session two. In session two, we are going to be looking at the new features and improvements for assemblies and families, followed by a short question and answer at the end. Uh, as always, there's a question section in your interface. If you guys have questions, feel free to type them in and we will do our best to answer them. So let's begin. So with assemblies, one of the first things we're gonna talk about here is with extruded bars. So there's a couple of improvements on extruded bars this year. Um, first and foremost is how they're included. So let's go into tools options really quick. Let's have a look. So you have the ability to control when you're dragging and dropping, for example, out of the project tree, how you want it to uh, be included. Is it gonna be an inclusion or an extruded bar command? When you're using control drag and drop visually on the screen, same thing. Do you want it to run the command again or include a copy of what you're dragging and dropping? And let's, uh, let's give you an idea. So right now, control drag and drop is set to uh, extruded bar. So that's fine. So if I go here, I'm gonna hold control on my keyboard, control drag and drop, and you can see here, it's relaunching the extruded bar command. So if, for example, I wanted to go from there to there, I wanna drive by this point, okay? So that is rerunning the command, even though we did control drag and drop. In the past, control drag and drop would just be a copy of the existing component for positioning. So let's go back to tools options and we'll change the control drag and drop features just so that you can see the differences. So here, again, I'm in assembly extruded bars. Here, if I go to inclusion and I do the same control drag and drop, notice this time, no dialog box for the extruded component command. It's now constrainable, it's just positionable. So we're making a copy of this to reposition or we'll say another instance of this, not a copy, okay? Same thing works with regards to dragging and dropping out of here, right? So here it's positioning currently. Kill out of that. If we go into our options one last time. We could have this as extruded bar. And this time if I drag and drop in here, it's just gonna rerun the extruded bar command to make a new extruded bar. So just gives you a little bit more freedom on what you wanna do and how you wanna do it. Now, some other options that have been changed within the extruded bars. Let's go here and let's run the extruded bar command. We'll do this on the edge, why not? Okay, so first of all, if you notice, the driven points are now located at either end of the extruded bar. They used to be at the center, okay? The angular solution is off center here, but this way it gives you more visual freedom to work with, okay? The other thing to note about the extruded bars, and let's go back and edit this. Actually, we'll go and delete this and do it again. Yep, we don't care, go away. Is once we have an extruded bar in there, let's say we want to go to this point here, you now have the ability to offset that initial driven point, okay? And that offset is going to be automatically remembered on the next uh, extruded bar. So if I go here, I validate, I select that, notice the offset is still there. And it will always be there until you either change it or you choose to reset it. So if we go to, if we go to our tools options one final time, 
you can have the value reset every time you run the extruded bar command. And that option is right here. Reset offsets during the new extruded bar creation. Awesome. So this next improvement, again, with extruded bars, we're going to do a little bit live, and then we're going to show a video as well. So here, let's delete this one. If you were in the webinars yesterday, I made mention to this improvement. It's uh, allowing you to put an extruded bar along a curve. So if I go and run my extruded bar command, nothing special that you have to do. Just select the curve or the curved edge of a, of a face like I am here. Set your driven point. And off you go. So nice extruded bar component dynamically right there on the edge. There are quite a few ways to use this new technology. So let's go ahead. Give me one second to go grab my sample. That's this video. Let me bring it up over here. So here we're going to run through this video real quick just to give you guys an idea. So here is adding an extruded bar on that curve up there. Of course, change your driven point appropriately. Let's look at it maybe for some iron work. This is something that's gonna be completely decorative. Here I'm using rotative selection to grab the local profile that I want, and I'm choosing which side of the profile to drive on. Basically just again by one of my driven components or driven points. I like that, we have the iron work done for this feature. If we wanna look at a multi-flight staircase handrail, so this is a 3D sketch. It's using the extruded component down that three-dimensional sketch. Want to look at a spiral staircase handrail. Why not? So now you have a more complica uh, complex curve, and it's still doing what it's supposed to do. And this is just giving you an idea of a finished product using extruded components. So we have a nice staircase, custom handrails, custom balusters and so on. All right, so let's close out of that. And we'll keep on going. So this next one is an improvement on a distribution using an articulated component, OK? So dist uh, a distributed component is a component with a lot of intelligence. And for example, all of this is going to be made in one shot, and it's going to include a component that includes articulation. OK, let's show you what I mean. So if I delete that, and I go to my modeling, and I go to distribution, I'm going to choose my profile. And then here, I'm going to choose the first family that I want to include. That's the railing guard section. And then I'm going to come down here and choose the door. OK. And now it is distributing everything based on the length of that curve. And that's not the improvement. The improvement is the fact that this door can come in with the articulation included. OK. If we go and we modify the length here to some other number, you can see that everything updates following our distribution methodology. Perfect. Go ahead and close that. All right. Next one. We're going to show the video for it's got, it has to do with an improvement on uh, distribution length and the, how you want to control subcomponents. So let me pull up the video here. And again, I'm just going to do some stuff live, some stuff with video. So here again, we have a, an example of a distributed component. What we're going to do in here is we're going to go take a look at uh, one of the subcomponents and set kind of a condition that we want to follow. OK, so right now we're going to go look at the subcomponent for the railing. 
and you can go select any of these things to modify basically okay so if we go and select one of these right now it's showing you how it's calculating automatically the distribu distributable family you can make it a local modifiable family now and just say no this one's always going to be 600 millimeters for example and then when we go and validate you're going to see that every third instance it's going to have the 600 millimeter component and that's that okay point number five inclusion with geometric drivers so the improvement here i'm just going to delete this is again allowing for an articulated component okay an articulated component is uh, a component that has motion in it right so here we have a family called rolling gates and this family is driven by two two key points so if i include this i can choose my first point my second point okay and then i'll say the axis reference is going to be z and the height of this is going to be 800 millimeters that's great in versions past that's all you would get is that which is already awesome but now we can include the articulation as well so this gate that's supposed to slide allows to slide so that's the improvement for 715 is the ability to have articulations okay i see a question that came up can the extruded bar feature be used for t-slot aluminum structural framing absolutely the extruded bar command there is a basic set of library components that ship with the i want to say top solid professional version for hollow extrusions t extrude or t frames and what's uh, and and so on uh, the extruded components don't exist that you're looking for. You can create your own extruded component family and it works identically. Okay, so let's keep on going. Point number six for new assembly features is going to be uh, when using the disassembly command. Okay, so sometimes when you include an assembly or include something into an assembly that object may have auxiliary elements for example this object down here does have auxiliary elements and what we want to talk about now is what happens when you disassemble something that has auxiliary elements so if i go into here and i choose disassembly and i select my assembly to oops, did i not open my assembly Silly me. Sorry. Would help to open the right thing. Here we go. So this object here has auxiliary elements. That's what we wanted to show. So hide, show, auxiliary elements. Perfect. So let's hide them again. Why not? Doesn't matter. And now when I go to my assembly and I disassemble this, because maybe you want to get rid of assembly structure, you have now this new option called copy auxiliary elements. And what that'll do is that'll copy any auxiliary elements from that object that you're disassembling to be auxiliary elements within this new assembly. So you don't lose them, you just have the ability to show them during that disassembly. And even if you forget to activate that, remember this is a feature in the history tree, so you can come in here and activate or deactivate that option. The auxiliary elements, uh, so the question was, uh, the auxiliary elements in question, are you talking about the ones in the assembly or the ones in the subcomponents? It could be the ones, it's, it's the ones in the subcomponents in this case, because auxiliary elements are coming in with that subcomponent. And then when I disassemble it, I'm choosing to keep a copy of it here in this new assembly. Okie doke. So let's keep on going. Decorrelate. So, in this option, we're going to talk about uh, decorrelating something, and that something is going to be an assembly neighborhood. This one's actually a really, really important thing to understand. Okay. Right now, these are all bottom up included objects. Okay. And I need to be able to create and trim for 
this, uh, this piece to here. So the first thing that I want to do is I'm going to create an assembly neighborhood. So I'm telling Top Solid that I want to be able to modify this part with that part and this part. And again, I'm doing this because these are all bottom up included objects. Here it's just telling you that a synchronization is going to happen. Makes total sense. Now, just to kind of hit this point home even more, I'm going to go into here and open this document so that we can see exactly what just happened. So we have our neighborhood, just like you would normally expect a neighborhood to be, and we can see a synchronization. So let's go ahead and apply an operation now. Maybe we'll just do a simple trim. I want to trim by that. I'm sure, that's good. Pin that up real quick. And I'm going to trim by this as well. We'll hit save. I'm going to go back and just showcase that because of that assembly neighborhood, I was able to modify this component by those components. Okay. But maybe now I don't want to have that parametric relationship anymore. Okay. For whatever reason. So, what can you do? Well, you can always go to the synchronizations. So I'm in the entities tree here and I'm going to go to my synchronized elements and there's our synchronized element in here. And you can right click on it and you can decorrelate it. Now, before I do that, I'm going to go back to my part file. Again, synchronization, right? Trim, trim. Let's go here. And now let's go and decorrelate. We're going to go ahead and hit the green check mark. When we do that, that basically removes the assembly neighborhood, right? When we remove the assembly neighborhood though, notice that the trimming is still there. Notice the trimming is still here. Notice the trimming features are also still here. If we go and edit one, you see a purple shape here, but notice that the shape has been basified. It says basic shape. So it's keeping in memory that basic shape, but that basic shape will always be located in that spot. Even if we go and make a change to the part, for example, if we make this 550, it keeps the trimming as it is. Of course, you don't have the history of it. So you'd only decorrelate if you want to break that parametric tie. Okay. Now, when we do break that parametric tie, we basify portions of the features so that nothing else blows up. Okay. Perfect. Let's keep on going. Okay, the next new improvement has to do with local part repetition. That is number eight. Um, and actually, this one is specific. I'm, I'm going to skip this one for now. Let's go talk about process server. Um, let's go here to this. And we're just going to talk about this one really quick. Let me bring this over. And Basically, here is what it is. And I'm going to kind of bring my cheat sheet over here to talk about it with the images. Process server, basically, all it's doing is this. In order to improve performance when updating the document, the processed operations for identical components are performed only once. So if we look at 714's calculation time, you can see here 0 .00, you know, 0 0.04 seconds. It's very fast. but over here, there's a lot of zeros now because when it's the same component, same process, we don't have to recalculate it, we just reuse it. So it is in fact speeding up the recalculation times on stuff like this, okay? All right, perfect. Now, from here, let's go talk about families. Okay, so families and optional drivers. So if I go and include a family and that family has optional drivers, if I click on the optional drivers, it now shows you the default value of that optional driver. That's it, just so that you know when this is included, what that size is already. Okay, there's nothing special you have to do. Any optional drivers will show their default value. And then the last one for this session has to do with uh, families again. 
and let me go, oops, apparently I closed my Word document, sorry. Let me go open that back up. Let me go back to families. So basically on this one, when you're opening an assembly document that is using a modified but unsaved family document, what happens? Now it's going to ask you if you want to save it. And let's show you what I mean. Uh, first, let me undo my changes. Let's undo these changes. I'm sorry, I should have done this before we started today, but that's okay. All right, good enough. So basically on this assembly here, if we go here and edit the inclusion, just to figure out what it is, it's the plate equipped family, which is this one here. If I go to the plate that's driving it and I go make a change. So I go here and go to fill it whatever fill that I put in it. Even if I save this one here, not save all, just save document, you can see there's a lot of unmodified objects here. If I click back to here, it's warning you now, saying family document, plate X, Y, Z must be saved to be used. Do you want to save it? You can choose always do this action and then yes, because maybe there's multiple files that need to be modified. I click yes, click yes, and now it's updated. The reason we added this is because in versions past, if you modified and still had the family open, for example, it didn't always update stuff you were working on. So we're just trying to help you keep track of what needs to be updated in order to carry forward your modifications. Okay, so at this point, that is it for this webinar. It's a short one, but uh, we've introduced the major new features for assembly and for families. Does anyone else have any questions that they'd like answered prior to calling this one complete? Okay, I don't see anything popping up. So with that, thank you for attending and we'll see you guys at one o'clock for session number three. In that session, we'll be reviewing the what's new for sheet metal, unfolding docs, visualization command and construction commands and tools commands. See you then.